اهلا وسهلا بكم جميعا معاكم ساره عشميق من بيتسبرغ واليوم حتلقى المحاضره دكتوره شدى وادي الرمحي من فيزياء طبيه في مستشفى المستشفى الجامعي لجامعه بيتسبرغ وقبل كده كانت تشيف فيزيست وكانت الرئيسه بس لو عندكم اي اسئله اتفضلوا اسالوها و without further ado انا ادي الميكروفون لشدى and she can start her lecture enjoy all right and so we can start today's lecture had on concepts of 3d planning using icru 50 and 62. i will start with english and then if anyone wants more clarification we can always go to arabic the idea is most of the things that we deal with and all the references are in english uh, unfortunately so it's good to introduce the concepts in english um, and then we can pause and then maybe do more explaining in Arabic. Contents of the presentation, basically we go through important terms and uh, such as coordinate system. This is very important for the physicist. And then we'll review some of the contouring that we need to do. And this is important for both the radiation oncologists and the planners. In most cases, the planners are the physicists as well. And then we'll go to some physician responsibility. Afterwards, we'll go into the different points we have in a plan and different points, as we know, are uh, either prescription points or our planning points, uh, normalization points, excuse me, and then, you know, so on and so forth. The, the next lecture and the one after that is going to be about actual 3D planning. So this is really where we need to start and to focus. And then lecture number six and seven uh, would take you through some of the 3D planning um, techniques and give you a few hints. Now, when we talk about coordinate system, you have to realize you have four different, completely different systems we're dealing with. You have the CT scanner, and then the treatment planning system. This is the record and verification, and this is your LINAC. In most cases, from the same vendor, vendor, whether it's all Varian or it's all Electa, but for sure, your CT scanner is different. CT scanner can be Philips, it can be Siemens, GE, Toshiba, tamam? Or in other situations, you would have a different, uh, a different system from different vendors. Whether they are from the same vendor or different vendors, it's very important. The coordinate system is correct. This is really important for physicists. Um, and also radiation oncologists should know, especially Rais uh, al-Qasam, because you have to know what's going on in your in your clinic. The, the two systems we're talking about, فيما يخص الأجهزة الطبية, هي IEC 601 or IEC 1217. Uh, IEC is a short for International Electrical Engineering Commission, and they set the standards for الأجهزة الجهاز, including the coordinate system. So. Both systems are equal. There is no one is better than the other. But you have to know that some vendors would use 601. If you are looking at the table motion, this is the LINAC table motion. If the table is going towards the LINAC, it will give you numbers. And if the table is going lower away from the LINAC, it will start giving you the 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is one system that could be used. Another one is that as you go towards the LINAC, you have plus, so one CM above isocenter, two CM above isocenter. And if you go away from the LINAC, you have in the minus. different sites. If you go to different sites, you might notice that, oh, how come your table when it goes lower, it's in the plus, but my table in my center when it goes higher, it's in the plus. It basically means they're using different coordinate system. Another way that also when your table goes lateral, yamin or yasar, it depends what type of system you're using. Lakin al muhim, the most important thing is the LINAC rotation. If I'm using 601, so the wedge would be in the x1, x2 direction. If this was an electa using 601, then the wedge would be in the x1, x2 direction. But if it was 1217, 
then the wedge would be in the y direction. الاتجاه ما اختلف. It's, the wedge is in exactly the same direction, لكن هو المس... Uh, so you have to be careful, which means the x2 صارت y1, and the x1 صارت y2 الجوز. هذا واحد من, ال... من الأمور. الآن انتبهوا على سبيل المثال. Look at this. So in 6, 0, 1, I have x1 in this direction. And let's say y2 in this direction. In 12, 17, x1 becomes y2 and y2 becomes x1. Not only that, I also have the, the rotation, the clockwise or counterclockwise. And remember what rotations we have. We have gantry rotation, we have collimator rotation, and we have table rotation. These guys could change. So this didn't change, but for example, isocenter rotation, which is the table rotation changed. And you have the collimator rotation change as well. The question now, by the way, if you buy a recent Electa, which is the Versa HD, it's confusing because in the clinical mode, Electa uses this definition, the Versa HD uses this definition for the coordinate system. Like if you go to the service mode, they switch to this definition. And the X1, you know, X1 is not meeting a monthly calibration. In your mind, this is X1. But then the oops, excuse me, to him, this would be X1. If you have a verse HD, if you have this sort of machine to say X1, X2, Y1, Y2, in this sort of machine, you have to use what we call the, the AB direction or the gun target direction. It will go the jaw from the target side. Or you have to be very clear. You say in clinical mode, X1 needs calibration. I really don't know why Electa, the newest version of Electa did this. The older version of Electa, the precise series, will, will, uh, the ones before that, there was no problem. So you'd be in the same coordinate system between service and clinical. But with the Versa, they switched for some reason. So you just have to be careful as a physicist when you put a maintenance call al Mohandas, which direction you're talking about. You have the new linear accelerator, you have a CT simulator, you have a planning system. So you have to make sure that when you're, when you're doing the acceptance testing, that you're going from one coordinate system to the other correctly. Well, this is not a problem because you can always define it from, from CT sim to the planning system is done by the engineer, but you can always do a very quick test and verify. phantom, you have a head somewhere or maybe a square piece or a rectangle piece, a circle piece, and make sure when you send it to the treatment planning system that AP is AP, right is right. Where the physicists get involved is when we, so this is the record and verification system. You have to make sure that you, when you go from treatment planning to the mosaic, uh, I'm sorry, or to the record and verification, or from record and verification to your Linux, that you're defining the coordinates correctly. If you have the variant system, then life is easy because those are an integrated system. But you still, as a physicist, you have to make sure that if you're sending a plan with X1, X2, Y1, Y2, and how to sell sahiha al musara. Otherwise, if you do something wrong in the coordinate system, you could either have a flipped image from the CT. Because we'll, we'll keep it. I was still a junior physicist. We flipped. Um, we didn't pay much notice going from here to there. And as we implemented 3D CRT at that time, we saw the patient And then we realized the planning system was using one chord system and the CTCM was using another chord system. Especially if you're, if you're new to this. But this is easy to catch, right? Because you can visually see if your phantom is flipped or will hit first, but I'll feed first. This is difficult to catch, so you have to be careful. You want the X1 jaw that you plan in the planning system and the MLC direction, I will wedge, that they go uh, exactly as you want them to the Linux side. So physicists have to do more 
acceptance testing. They have to spend more time commissioning the process. And as I said, if it's in the same vendor, example, it's all variant system, then things become easier for you. If it's from a different vendor, um, then things become difficult. Another word, if, if you have an ELICTA system, they're still considered independent. ELICTA system is to be used with any other vendor. So let's say you have a Monaco over here and you have Mosaic and you have your uh, ELICTA Linux. Just because you're from the same vendor doesn't mean in Haikun smooth communication. You have to verify it is smooth because, as I said, they're made to be independent. So they act as independent units. So this is important. This would be the first step you spend. Again, this is from experience. I'm in a 3D CRT program in some hospital I worked in. Accordance system. إحنا نفكر دائما data collection, beam modeling, نفكر ب verification of the model, نعمل verification of the plans, MU calculation, but then you forget about the current system. Luckily, the first image we sent to the planning system, as I said, مثل ما حكيت بسيتي إجت مشغلة ال ال patient مثل لو طوال تمام معلق تحسه يعني his facing down is completely. So at the we said okay we're stopping and we have to look at the current system definition. But this is really important. The second thing now we're talking about tumor definition. LUD, you have orthogonal images from a from a simulator, and you draw um, an outline of what you want to treat. In 3D planning, and by the way, what we say here for 3D planning is true for IMRT and VMAT and more or less, more or less. I'll tell you between the two. True for SRS. ففي أشياء كثير مشتركة. So once once you are very comfortable with the 3D planning, going to the other specialized techniques become easier. مش مية بالمية easy, but it becomes easier. The GTV, you know, last week كان الدكتور تكلم عن concepts of GTV and CTV and PTV. The GTV هو the tumor المرئي. أو الملموس مثلا الغدة اللي إذا عند واحد في عنده غدة لمفاوية بال بالنك بالأجزلة you can actually feel them and you touch them. طيب what about inside؟ نستخدم ال CT simulation. لكن ال CT simulation لوحدها مش كافية. So بال 3D planning you want to connect to radiology machines. You want to have images from PET and images from MRI. فالآن العبء الآن على الفيزيائي أو ال planner because you have to do a lot of image registration and image registration but in order the physician to do proper delineation he or she have has to have all these information so in order to do gtv delineation you have to have ct from radiology طيب ممكن واحد يقول ليش ct from radiology ليش ما نعمل ct سم تبعتنا ct سم of radiation therapy department, you will use that for delineation as well as your planning system calculation. ولكن إذا the patient عامل surgical resection, تمام فهو يجيك على radiation therapy department. There is no tumor, so you cannot see anything on the on the CT scan. فتحتاج مرات إنك تعمل fusion مع pre-surgery CT أو pre-surgery MR أو PET. So whatever you can see. You will delineate. وصدقا هذه أصعب شغلة لطبيب المعالج لأنه this is where things start. تمام this is where you build. فأنت عايز حجر الأساس يكون حجر أساس متين. The next step is the CTV. CTV يقول لك I don't see the tumor. I don't see it in PET. I don't see it in CT. I don't see it in MR. But I know there is extension to the tumor. Two things over here. The first thing is we have to know that the CT, the MR, and the PET have a certain resolution. They cannot give you any image. It is possible that you have a tumor, but you cannot see it because it is less than the resolution. However, from the patient's knowledge and pathology and radiation therapy, you know that even if I don't see a tumor here, I will treat it. For example, we have breast. تمام؟ الـ axillary dissection ويطلعوا نيجاتيف. ولكن على ستيج معين من الـ breast cancer we say 
this stage, even though the lymph nodes are negative, I will still give them radiation. بهاي الحالة نقول إنه axillary lymph nodes are CTV. تمام؟ ما في GTV. I don't have a GTV. But I have a CTV. اللي هم axillary lymph nodes. كذلك if you're treating lung tumor and your tumor is central, so in certain locations you would probably have lymph node invasion even though you cannot see it. فهو ال CTV is a clinical concept and it can exist without a GTV. مثل ما قلنا ال ما في GTV بال lymph node بس I would expect إنه تمانين بالمية it will be involved so we'll treat it. In addition, CTV respects اللي هو ال boundaries. يعني إذا أنا أعرف for this type of tumor that CTV will not cross to the bone or will not have bone invasion, for example, تمام? then the CTV will, will have zero margin from that side. In this case, I'm giving example of head and neck. And you can see the GTV is the green one. And the CTV is the, the, blue, the blue one. If I go like GTV plus 5 millimeter, I'm going to CTV. But notice this. I don't have any expansion from the larynx side, from the air cavity side. Why? Because if I had any invasion, then I should be able to see it. I don't have cells in the air. So in this case, then I don't expand. In um, the PTV, we expand, and we'll come to that later on. So CTV is a clinical concept. It can exist without GTV, and it respects boundaries of tissue. If this particular tumor can to cross the boundary, مثل lymph nodes, نلحقها, تمام? If it doesn't cross that boundary, then we respect it. We don't expose more tissue than we need. And you could have multiple CTVs, by the way. You could have lymph node CTV, you could have primary tumor CTV. So the issue of CTV, it can exist without a GTV. So now PTV, planning tumor volume. وهنا يجي دور الفيزيائي. So الفيزيائي يهتم أو البلانر يهتم في planning tumor volume. And it's important to know that it's a geometrical expansion. أكيد إنه إحنا we have to have أفوي آه. We have to have extra margin around the CTV to be able to deliver in some accurate dose or accurate targeting. If it is in the liver, close to the diaphragm, if it is in the lung, if it is in the organs, for example, the prostate, it is on it. So your tumor can move. This is called internal motion. So in order to treat it, act عمل accurate targeting, you have to have a a large PTV. معلش لما أنا I get excited أنا أشرح بإيديا كتير فا sorry if if people are looking at my video and seeing me doing a lot of hand gestures. I'm one sorry I can't mute people today. But if you want to, I think you're already خلاص they muted them. تمام. الشغلة الثانية we have to take into account اللي هو ال uncertainties in the mechanical motion of the machine عندك ال linear accelerator عندك ال collimator عندك ال table and x1 كل هدول are independent mechanical entities يعني كل واحد مع الصوت thank you so you have to know what machine you have and you have to know ايش ال accuracy بال machine تبعك طبعا الان العبء على الفيزيائيين again you have to know the quality assurance of your machine and how much mechanical tolerance that you have. لاحظ الآن بال 3D planning منشيل عبء من الطبيب منحطه على الفيزيائي. بس ما تنسوا إنه الطبيب بالنهاية ال GTV and CTV has have to be really well delineated. Otherwise, طبعا we don't have a plan. لكن everything else, almost everything else, هو العبء على الفيزيائي. ممكن واحد يقول الماشين تبعتي is very old. I have 12 year old machine. I cannot keep it within 2 millimeter mechanical uncertainty. إيش نعمل؟ ما نستخدمها for 3D planning؟ أو مثلا عندكم cobalt unit and uh, it's very old one and the mechanical motion is really bad. You don't have proper maintenance. No, you can still use 3D planning. However, Margins to the PTV should be larger. Yani if I work in an institution with a modern machine, very tight margins, I can follow whatever protocol to for your 
for your quality assurance and you can assure that your accuracy is within two millimeter, then can, I can have tight margin for the PTV. Either the machine is older and mechanical accuracy is not yani much, it's within plus minus four millimeter, على سبيل المثال, then you have to build that into your PTV. فيصف ال PTV عندك طابة أكبر من uh, من المتوقع. So you have, يعني ال PTV, it's not one size fit all, fits all. يعني ما تشوف أنت في في يقول لك تروح ستة millimeter expansion لل PTV and you're done. It actually it it is it's a concept that depends on your current practice or current machine. So this is just talking about in general. Had the اخذتها uh, من presentation من Dr. Thomas Mackey can it tell an ICRU recommendation. It's a very interesting presentation. موجودة في library تبعت ال AAPM AAPM.org. The library is open for free to everyone, so you can go to the library and you can تعمل search مثلا ICRU presentation. But this shows shows a concept where you have one GTV. Uniform expansion CTV and uniform expansion PTV. So this would be one case. Another case is that you have this primary GTV with the primary CTV and primary PTV, and then you have CTV expansion, the expansion on the yamin, مع ال PTV تبعه. So it is possible to have different expansions for the PTVs and CTVs. الآن في عنا concept of normal tissue. في عنا the organs at risk. وشغلة اسمها PRV Planning Risk Volume ال Normal Tissue الأعضاء السليمة عفوا أعيد الصياغة الأعضاء السليمة اللي Entrance أو Exit Doors من البيم This becomes Organ at Risk عضو فأني Organ هو يكون ممكن يعني يستقبل أشعة أني Organ that will receive Radiation then we have to delineate it and we call it organ at risk. مش فقط proximity to tumor, it's in the path of the radiation beam. الشغلة الثانية هي يقول لك spinal cord, بعدين spinal cord PRV, or we go like brain stem and brain stem PRV, optics and optics PRV. So مثل like we do بال PTV من عمل, we put an expansion to allow for motion and tolerances. You can expand your organ at risk and you call this planning risk volume. الهدف منه مثلا اذا احنا عملنا expansion نفترض للاوبتيك كيازم عملنا expansion 1 mm everywhere ونشوف الدوز اللي تيجي لل PRV فيقول لي انه if if the patient moves within 1 mm uh, in 3 dimension and هو ال expansion in 3 dimensions so if the patient moves 1 mm in 3 dimensions then this is the expected dose to the to the optic chiasm تمام ال PRV you can expand it one or two millimeter or three millimeter. This is how much خلينا نسميها cushion you want to give around your organ at rest to make sure that within this sphere or cushion, the maximum dose ma تتعد. When we first started من عين 3D planning, we used Quantic. Quantic is an excellent reference. أحسن من إمامي. When you want to do the a dose objectives for different organs. And I'll give you an example. In my um, opinion, طبعاً, when us, it's different schools of thought. Dr. Shada? Uh, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It was just brought to my attention that we have at least 10 of our audience that do not understand Arabic at all. So okay, yes. I guess they live in Egypt, but so maybe we should um, switch to all English. I'm sorry. Okay, of course, we can switch to all English, and then if anyone wants extra explanation in Arabic, we can always provide the translation. I think that's a good idea. And Thank I apologize you. for the non-Arab speakers. Yeah, um, I didn't know uh, either, so, okay. Yes. Thank you. And so I was saying, when you want to establish a 3D program, it's very important that you have those volume objectives for different treatment sites. We're used to using Imami. However, in my opinion, and of course you can agree or disagree, I found Quantic when we first switched to 3D CRT, you know, a few uh, a few years ago. Quantic is better, and and here is why. I was explaining why because it gives you the the organ that you're worrying about, and it tells you if you're using 3D CRT. Quantic has some SRS, SBRT, those objectives, but it's mostly for 3D CRT. And then it tells you what type of complication you expect with what dose. For example, if you're talking about larynx, okay? 
And if I have D maximum less than 66 gray, I have less than 20% chance of complication. And this complication is vocal dysfunction. And it even gives you more details, telling you that this is with chemotherapy, and it gives you the, the study it's based on. Quantic basically is a summary of so many studies, clinical trials, and instead of you going from one paper to the other, they summarized everything for us. So this is really good. Let's say your physicist, your planner did a plan for head and neck, and you have the mean dose to the larynx less than 50 gray. Then there is less than 30% chance, this is the probability, less than 30% chance for aspiration if the patient is also having chemotherapy so on and so forth and you also see for the lung right so for the lung some people use only one criteria volume receiving 20 gray so this is how we read this volume of the lung receiving 20 gray should be less or equal to 30 percent of the dose a uh, 30 percent uh, or less of the volume in this case you don't you don't have zero probability of complication you have less than 20 percent and by the way, we never have zero probability of complication. Even if you have very, very minimal doses, you still have a probability of complication. What Quantic does, it gives you this probability versus the dose. So for example here, if someone gives me a mean lung dose of 13 gray, there is then 10% chance of pneumonitis. If another planner, gives me mean dose of 20 gray, then there's 20% 20 chance of pneumonitis. Now going from 20 to 24 may not seem much in terms of gray. You say, oh, 20, 24 gray, four gray is not a big deal, but then you're jumping, a big jump for, for your probability of pneumonitis. Quantic is available. I'm sorry about this. Um, I can send you Quantic, I can compile them, and I can send it to, uh, can send it to you through RCC. I can either send the, the summarized Quantic report, and they go, basically, they go from brain, brainstem, head and you have the lung, you have all the way to the pelvis. So they have, it's, it's a very detailed summary. Uh, and then you can always look up the actual study that they are referring to in the paper. So now when you think about it, physician's responsibility is defining, when we say PTV, we mean the entire thing. So starting from the GTV, building up to CTV and PTV. Although in the last step for PTV, the physician might want to consult the physicist, especially if you have an older machine. And of course, defining the organs at risk. And then you have to define the various levels of PTV. Let's say in head and neck, you have PTV, you have different volumes receiving 45 gray, 50 gray, 60, 66 gray, for example, or in the prostate. It is always better to, remo to remove confusion, not to call them PTV1, PTV2, PTV3. It's always good and establish a good practice to have the PTV followed by the dose that you want that PTV to receive. So there's no confusion whatsoever for the uh, physicist or the planner that what PTV he or she are working on at this time. And then of course you have to put your dose objective criteria and whether you want to use Imami or you want to use Quantic, you have to be reasonable, meaning if you have PTV right next to a spinal cord and you want to have, you know, almost square type gradient going from 50 gray to zero, you, we cannot do that. So you have to give priorities. So I say, if I have this critical organ, then I will, give, I will give priority to critical organ sparing and not to PTV. And it is common practice that you might want to have PTV underdosed a little bit in order to meet your organ at risk criteria, but then underdosed by how much? And the same 90% covering which dose, vice versa. Now, what if you have to underdose CTV or GTV to spare the organ. Then it becomes clinical judgment. So this is where the physician have to 
think about it. Which one is more important, this organ or the coverage of the tumor? For example, would I compromise CTV coverage for, for the optic chiasm? I don't know. This is, you know, this is for the physician. But would I, would I compromise coverage for brainstem? For sure I will do that because you don't want to kill the patient. <laughs> so one way is setting priorities. And you know, over 16 years, I have seen physicians from different schools. They always give priority one to brainstem and spinal cord and then priority two to the PTV. And then, excuse me, and then you know, all the other organs will have priority three or four or five. Another thing is that if I'm doing IMRT or stereotactic, I might be able to achieve all those objectives for PTV and organ at risk, and everyone is happy. But in 3D CRT, you may not be able to achieve, if, especially if you have close proximity. So other options I've seen physicians do, and of course, our dear physicians in the audience can tell us, do I change those fractionation? Instead of two gray, I make it 1.6 uh, gray because we know normal tissue can handle uh, better if I have less dose per fraction, but then we have to increase number of fraction. Or maybe I change care from curative to palliative. Uh, Usaraha, I'm really interested to hear what our physicians in this audience would use because I've seen this. This has always been depending on the school that the physician comes from and depending on the practice of this physician. So it's interesting to see, you know, discuss between us. But that's what I say when I, you know, when I mean you have to be reasonable. Don't expect your physicist to give you 100% dose here and next to it gives you zero dose. So what happens if you have to compromise? So my suggestion, and this is coming from when we started 3D planning uh, in King Hussein Cancer Center, so that we created teams and then we created, every team looked at different sites. So we had radiation oncologist who's mostly doing breast and you know, head and neck, and we had in every team, we had a radiation oncologist and a physicist. At that time, in the center, we didn't have dosimetrists, so the physicist did all the planning. And then we involved also the radiation therapy therapist, uh, the RTTs, because we also need to know in, in positioning and we need to know the fixation. And then every team sat down together and put down protocol, clinical protocols, IPP, internal practice protocol. And then you say, what's the expected CTV? For example, for breast, okay? If I want to follow the PTV expansion, then part of the PTV will go into air. But we all know the planning system cannot deliver dose to air. So what do we do? Do we keep it and change the way we read the DVH? Or we, we crop the, the PTV to skin surface? And then also, as you have learned from a previous lecture, uh, planning systems don't really do well when it comes to predicting those at skin surface. So then in order to be able to see the DVH well, then you have to crop your PTV to lower than the skin. Unless, of course, there is a position in the skin I want to treat, such as a lymph node, then we put bolus, so on and so forth. So it really, it's not, it's not an easy issue. It doesn't, I mean, it looks easy, but it's not. When you go from 2D to 3D, it's really difficult. The good thing is, once you establish these protocols, it's really easy to carry them over to IMRT and VMAT and others. It becomes really easy, but it's very difficult, if, especially if you're starting 2D, going to 3D. It will take time. Um, I should not say difficult. It will take time, uh, but it's time well spent because it will make the life so much easy. Excuse me. As I said, you have to involve the therapist because for every slice, you have also to think, for breast, do I really need to have two millimeter cuts for the CT? Or maybe five millimeter is more than enough. What about lymphomas? What do you think? What about if I'm treating pediatric? What about head and neck? So don't just think about organs delineation and those objective. You have to think of the entire process. So start from the CT. So that's why you need to have the therapist with you because they need to write down the protocol from their side, you know, saying for breast, we do five millimeter cut. And this is the positioning. Um, and this is the breastboard, and this is what we do. And also at the other end, the therapist from the linear accelerator part, the technologists who are sitting at the NINAC, the physician and the physicist and the therapist, they need to discuss 
how often do I need to do image guidance? How often do I need to take uh, orthogonal images? How often do I need to take KV? If your linear accelerator have um, KV capabilities, do I just take orthogonal KV or I take a con beam CT? It, it will take, you know, again, from, from when I went through this process in, in, uh, in King Hussein Cancer Center, it took us a good two months to finalize everything for the entire department. Some teams, they finish earlier because they have an, early, you know, an easy job, but other teams, especially those with the head and neck, it will take longer. And pediatric, because you have to be really reasonable for pediatric patients. You don't expose them to more radiation that, than, than you need be. So the second part of the lecture is prescription and normalization point. Oh, prescription is easy. Prescription, I know I want to give Afwan. Sorry, uh, before we start the second part, there was a question from Nash Kimani. He was wondering if you mind explaining the Quantic chart again for him, please. Sure, I will do that quickly and then we can also do more the next, the next lecture. And I, I will be with you also for the next lecture. So Quantic gives you DVH, dose volume histogram, uh, because it tells you how much dose a certain organ receives in order to have a certain complication probability. Tama, let me try to do this. Hold on. You should be able to see. Can you see, can you see this table now? Can, I have a table that I'm showing. Okay, so this is this is the summarized table of Quantic. So this is the uh, the Quantic table that, in the publication that summarizes everything. For example, it tells you for. Uh, let me show you something that you'll probably be surprised to see. Look at this spinal cord. Imami tells us under no circumstances spinal cord should not get dose more than 45 gray. And if people want to go into the history of how Imami et al brought those numbers, you know, please go ahead and, and look at the history. However, Quantic is more evidence-based, meaning I can give up to 50 gray to the spinal cord with only 0.2%, or shirin faqat, 0.2% probability of my, uh, myelopathy. Tama? So is 0.2% too much? Someone might say, I don't want to deal with any, I want to deal with 0%. It could be, it could be up to you. But sometimes remember in head and neck tumors where you have to push the dose to 66 gray and I've seen 70 gray sometimes, your spinal cord might get more than 45 gray. And unless you say, okay, forget the tumor, just spare my cord, you know, you, then probably you'll go into palliation. So what if your spinal cord has 50 gray? Then Quantic tells you, and again, you have to go to Quantic and you have to read the literature that it's basing on. 0.2% chance of probability. Let's look at the brainstem. So we're used to saying brainstem, less than 54 gray uh, dose, maximum dose. Less than 54 gray maximum dose does not mean zero probability uh, of neuropathy. It means that you have less than 5% probability, mumkin 3% or 2% or 4 but it's less than 5%. What if you irradiate a small volume of the brainstem, you know, 1 to 10 cc, uh, up to 59 gray, then the probability is still the same. Now, what's the difference between these two? This is whole organ. So this is, uh, uh, this is in 2D, this is like in, in the 2D era. When you say whole organ, the entire organ of brainstem is being irradiated. If you have to lateral opposed beam, right? So, so you also have to read this column, by the way. But if you're doing 3D CRT, and if you're doing head and neck treatment, you're using three-dimensional conformal therapy. So just part of the brainstem will get high dose, not all of it, and that's the difference. So if part of the brainstem would, uh, would get the dose, then you can then have a little bit of yani, cushion. So you can go up to 10 cc, receiving 59 gray, and you still have the same probability of, uh, of necrosis, of neuropathy, tamam? If I'm doing stereotactic, for example, stereotactic single fraction for a tumor near the brainstem, then you would have uh, up to 12.5 gray maximum dose to the, to the brainstem, and you'd have the same probability, which is you know, less than 5% of necrosis. So this is how you read Quantic. 
you know, and it has, as I said, it starts from the brain all the way to spinal cord, cochlea, pharynx, lung, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all the way down to, you know, abdomen, and then you go to uh, to the pelvis area. Look at this for rectum. For rectum, you would again, you you never have, excuse me, you never have zero percent complication, but you'll always have some sort of complication. And for the, the rectum and bladder, it tells you the grade we're talking about. Is it grade two toxicity, grade three toxicity, so on and so forth. So that's why, in my humble opinion, you know, Quantic is more evidence-based and it depends on published clinical trials, published papers. Not all of them are clinical trials, but published papers. And it summarizes everything in these tables. I could, you know, I could share them with you. I don't have, I don't mind actually. And let's go back to the presentation. Okay, and Muhammad Abu Ghassim uh, made the point to, he said, you should note that the values in the quantic is for conventional fractionation, meaning two grades per fraction. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So whenever uh, it says 3D CRT, they mean absolutely conventional fractionation, صحيح. but sometimes and home SRS, and then they tell you if it's single fraction SRS, well, two fractions, but you're absolutely right. So now, Ashan, we should 15 yes, minutes and fine. we still have yes. a lot of, as I said, I am with you next time uh, on Sunday, inshallah. So if I don't have time uh, to finish this, we can take time from the next lecture. And Sunday, I have more time because I'm at home and it's a weekend, but today I am in the clinic and I have to, you know, finish close to, you know, one hour. So now we have two concepts in 3D planning. We have what we call prescription point and we have normalization point. A prescription point basically is the point where you prescribe those two. So the, the physician says 200 centigrade in 25 fractions, but it has to go to a point. If you're doing IMRT or VMAT or stereotactic, then we can prescribe to a volume. But in 3D CRT, we are still prescribing to a point. Normalization point is the point that, that has 100% isodose line going through it. So what you see on the screen, 90% acidose line, 50%, 110, uh, is basically normalized to this point. It is highly recommended, but it's up to you guys, but it's highly recommended that prescription dose is the same as the normalization dose. And I will show you why, okay? Because what you see on the screen might be different. So now let's look at this. Physician is prescribing two gray, uh, per fraction for 10 fractions. And it's a very simple APPA plan. The planner, the physicist was doing, you know, trying different things, moving the point up, down, left, right. And he has a plan that is normalizing, uh, I'm sorry, that is reference, uh, that is prescribing to this point and another plan that is prescribing to this point. So this is the difference between them. One is in the center of your volume, and then the other one is a little bit down, right? Now, notice what you have here. You have something called plan normalization. And in both plans, I am normalizing to the isocenter of field one. And now uh, I should say this is an isocentric treatment. I know because I did this for, uh, for this lecture. So both beams are at the isocenter. And I want to say, I want to normalize everything to the isocenter. But one time I was using this point for my prescription and then I thought, oh, if I move the point down a little bit, if I move the point uh, up or right, I get better distribution. I'm sorry, I get, you know, maybe I get uh, uh, better whatever. It's better to put it in, in, in soft tissue instead of bone. So of course it's better to put it in soft tissue instead of bone. So you're moving your prescription point around. And so the, the other plan is Rx2. If you look closely at the isodose coverage, you see it's the same. I'm, I'm sorry the lines uh, are thin, but if you can come closer, you know, trust me, I really took my time to come up with two points that have the same isodose lines. <laughs> I tell you it's the same. <laughs> Tamam? But look what happens. In one plan, the planning system is reporting a dose of 1.9998, okay, close to two gray. And the total dose is 19.982, also close to 20. We say, no problem. But look at the Rx2. 
I have the point reported, the planning system reporting 2.13 gray, and then the total is 21 gray. Interesting, this 6% difference between this and this, between the 20 and 21.3. And the physicist is confused because, oh, in both cases, I'm doing two gray, 10 fractions for a total of 20 gray. And I want this to be my 100% isodose line. But then the planning system is reporting 21.3 gray and less than 20 gray here. So what's going on? I am prescribing to one point and normalizing to the other point, to another point, completely third point. Let's do something different. Let's say, okay, I'm going to keep prescribing to this dose. This is my reference dose, Rx2, Rx2, right? But now I will keep the normalization to the isocenter. So you get this type of isodose line. It's very hot. You can see, you can see the pink line. The pink is 105% is right here. And I have another 105% over here. And then you see the 100% is an hourglass, yani, uh, the, the shape we expect from APPA. Whereas if I prescribe to the, the RX2 point, oh my God, now it's completely different. I only have 105 here. 100% is nowhere near. And also, if you look at the prescription that the planning system is calculating, it's 21.3 gray, and this one is 20 gray. So which one is correct? Actually, all of these scenarios are correct if you're knowing what you're looking at. The reason they are confusing is that we're using percentage isodose line. I will come to that later. Give me just two minutes. In order to remove any confusion, ya jamaat al khair, that's why I highly recommend, and this is what I do when I'm doing 3D planning or palliation, my prescription dose, the point that is getting the prescription is the same point I do for normal, normalization. Because only at this point, when I do this, prescription point is the same as normalization point. Then the percentage isodose line reflect what I want to see. Remember that all the problems we're having is that we're, we're looking at percentage isodose line. Here is something I want to tell everyone, and trust me, this is coming after. And I, uh, so, so we did have along the uh, we, uh, you know, there was a case where we mistreated a patient because of this scenario exactly. The, the physicist, again, I, I, uh, in the beginning of 3D planning, the physicist was prescribing to a point, normalizing to a different point. And the radiation oncologist was looking at percentage isodose line. So what, what they didn't do, they did not try, excuse me, they did not try to see how much is this percentage relative to absolute dose, because everything changes. You know, you're looking at relative, relative isodose line. Relative to what, Tayyib? Is it relative to the two gray? Or is it relative to the 2.1 gray? When a relative to a three gray, if you know, depending where you are. So learning from this mistake, we decided that prescription and normalization should be the same point. In this case, the percentage isodose line are reflecting the absolute dose the patient is getting. However, I don't use percentage isodose line anymore. So now all of us, I all of us, I mean the people I know, we're only using absolute dose. So if I'm sitting on a planning system and I'm reviewing a plan, I turn on absolute dose. I want to see the dose in gray or centigrade because then I can, because I don't care how the physicist is doing the plan. And the radiation oncologist doesn't really care where the physicist is putting in a prescription or a reference or normalization. What you want to make sure is that your centigrade, your gray is being delivered correctly. So I would highly recommend that you use gray or centigrade when you are reviewing the plan. And I highly recommend for the physicist to have these two points the same. Tamam? And this is basically what we talked about. Okay. Now the location of the prescription point. Again, this is preferred. And in 3D CRT, you should be able to easily 
have this preference um, achieved. It's preferred to be in the middle of the PTV, preferred to be in the middle of the open field. This, by the way, has some dosimetrical consideration. If you were not in the middle of the open field, if you are at the edge, there is a risk that you might be prescribing to penumbra region, and you don't want to do that. So you have to be really careful. Tamam? And it's also preferred if you have six, seven, eight, nine beams, that that point be in the middle uh, of the intersect of, uh, intersecting beams. If you do this, then this becomes what we call the ICRU reference point. So if you read the ICRU report, it's very long. It has a lot of words, but basically they're telling you, we want to have a point that has high dose and low gradient. High dose means it should be in the PTV and low gradient, again, it's in the PTV because in 3D CRT, we try to have homogeneous dosage distribution. And this is taking a snapshot from ICRU 50. As I said, I'm sorry, I cannot share this with you because it, you know, it's copyrighted and you have to purchase it, but I can share the Quantic lectures with you because it, it's, open, it's open material. So ICRU reference point should be clinically re relevant. Basically, it should report the dose of the PTV should be easy to define, again, think of PTV, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Avoid placing your prescription point at tissue interface. Usually this is not difficult, unless you're doing chest wall and the patient is very thin or the surgeon removed so much tissue that you literally have skin overborne. In this case, instead of placing your prescription point uh, where you don't have any soft tissue, you have to go higher up, go superior towards the axilla, then you will find a little bit of, of tissue there. Of course, this means now your, your tangential beams are no longer equally weighted, so you have to play with the weighting, just because the point now is skewed to one beam or the other. Sometimes you might have half beam block, meaning the isocenter is blocked. This is a, a technique used by some centers. Let's say I'm doing adjacent regions. I'm doing treating breast and supraclav in order to min minimize patient motion and minimize table motion. If I have two isocenters, the therapist has to go inside, move you know, the first isocenter to the breast and move the uh, second isocenter to the supraclav, then I can just put one single point, which is the isocenter in the intersection between breast and supraclav, and then I open beam to treat breast, and then I open beam to treat supraclav. In this case, you should not put your prescription or normalization at the isocenter. If the isocenter is blocked, or it's in the penumbra, meaning it's, you know, you have one very close jaw, one CM or less. Okay, so we talked about this. Again, there's a lot of, a lot of Samiha red flags about you have to pay attention if your prescription point is not your normalization point. And I say this because from a personal experience, we had this issue when you first went to 3D CRT, and we really had a mistreatment of one patient because of this. So how can I make it easy? As physicists, think about if I'm going to do manual MU calculation, and this is a, a lecture we're going to discuss later, uh, not now, I think in a later lecture, I will be with you guys. What is the best position I can put that I can have the depth, the effective depth, and the SSD for this point, making my life easy when I do MU calculation? If you can find that point in the plan you're doing, then that's your prescription point. Uh, there's another thing called ICRU reference dose. Basically, that's the dose that ICRU asks you to report. That's the, the dose to the ICRU point. Make your life so much easy. Normalization point is the same as prescription point, and this point satisfies ICRU location, then all life is easy, you know. So in the last, I know it's almost 2 p.m. my time, but if you give me 10 minutes extra and then we can stop, and then we can have, you know, or actually, I would like to stop here and uh, answer any questions because I still have time. I still have six more slides, I think, and then I'm, I'm done. But I do want to rush them. So we can do them on, on Sunday, inshallah. I will take any answers or questions up until this point. Okay, thank you, Shada. I was, I was, I, I unmuted myself twice to ask you, but I didn't want to interrupt you if that's what you wanted to do since we're running out of time. Any questions, I ask Ilham? 
في فادي اي سي فادي ريزنج هيز هاند Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you for uh, your lecture. Firstly, uh, can, can I ask a, a question? Please. The first part of lecture, uh, PTV depend on uh, if a machine is old or or new. Drawing PTV. Hey, well, PTV is a physics concept. You have to take into account. الانترنال موشن للتارجت تمام يعني التارجت في مكان بيتنفذ اذا في مكان okay. مثل البروستيت يو هاف المثانا فوق ويو هاف الريكتا من تحت سو يو هاف تو هاف اكسبانشن تو تيك كير اوف ذوس موشن تمام انترنال موشن البي تي في اكسبانشن شود تيك انتو اكاونت ذا ميكانيكال اكيوريسي اوف يور ماشين تمام يعني ذيس از بارت اوف ات الميكانيكال اكيوريسي بيعتمد على الاكيوريسي اوف جانتري موشن على الكوليميتر موشن على التيبل موشن اف يو كان كيب الميكانيكال اكيوريسي اوف يور ماشين 2 ملم اور ليس يو شود نوت وري تو ماتش اباوت البي تي في تو اد مور اكسبانشن تو ات يو اونلي وري اباوت ذا انترنال موشن اند ذا سيت اب ايرور الان Your machine might be perfect, صحيح? By perfect, it doesn't mean zero inaccuracy, صحيح? Perfect من أول هي ضمن and if it was a machine treating IMRT or stereotactic, إذا نتكلم عن واحد مليمتر فأقل. تمام? And then you have to have the immobilization. اللي هو لما the therapist يحط the patient on the table, how good are they to align? If they are using image guidance, things become better. So let me tell you. If you're doing, and we didn't go through this in detail, so, so thank you for, for, uh, for the question. If you're doing motion management, مثلاً, you're doing 4 DCT, or doing DIBH, which is deep uh, inspiration breath hold, or you're doing Electa, ABC, automatic breath control, I think. تمام? If you're reducing the motion, and you're using very strong immobilization, And you're doing image guidance. And see, I'll put here image guidance. Yeah, and you're doing con beam CT, and you're doing imaging every day. And you have a machine that is finely tuned. Then the physician can prescribe two or three millimeter to your PTV, and that's it. تمام. لكن I'm not doing motion management. And I'm treating a tumor in the lung. Then maybe you want to have six millimeter to PTV. Everything. S being equal, كل شيء تاني being equal, but the only thing is the lung is moving. طيب, I am doing motion management. I'm doing immobilization. But for some reason, for some reason, I cannot keep the machine have very accurate mechanical positions. يعني I know it should be less than two millimeter, but for some reason, the maintenance engineer or the machine is very old. My machine can only give me an accuracy of three millimeter. Meaning, if I tell the machine go to 10 cm field size, it might go 10.3, or it might go to 9.7. And for some reason, you cannot correct for it. It does not mean you cannot use the machine. It that means you, you know you can still use it, but you have to expand the margin to the PTV. So instead of giving four millimeter to PTV, now you need to give maybe eight millimeter to PTV. طبعا, this doesn't mean well, is the machine. That I still use it. No, you should. You should have saying, yani I can treat with three millimeter inaccuracy. To work with the machine, or we use it only for palliation. You have to be into as a physicist. Now we love to have expensive equipment and expensive toys. We should really do. We should really do. You know, but you have. You also have to make sure. I know Sarah is. is uh, <laughs> I can tell you. We all. Yani you have to really make the best of what you have. So you have as a physicist. You have to be clever. كان عندنا فيليبس اس ال 75 ماشين يعني هاي الماشين ذا لاست برودكشن اوف ات كان بالثمانينات اند وي ستيل ميد ات ورك لتقريبا بدايه الالفيه لل 2001 بس وي وير سمارت اباوت ات احنا از فيزيست وي سيد اوكي فور ذس ماشين وير اونلي تريتينج باليتيف كيسز وحتى مش كل الباليتيف كيسز لايك وي دونت تريت سباين فور اكزامبل وي تريت هول برين وي كان تريت هول بيلفيس وي كان تريت اكستريميتيز اند وي كان دو سيمبل ثينجز So, and as a physicist, you have to be smart about it. Uh, if your machine is very old, 
and then it's you know tolerance you cannot guarantee tolerance to two millimeter or less and then you have to tell the radiation oncologist the chairman uh, of the department of what you can treat on this machine i will not treat head and neck for example on this machine if the machine cannot have a good two millimeter or less accuracy i will refuse to treat it tamam I would also refuse to treat lung patients because in addition to the motion of the lung, you're adding mechanical inaccuracy in the machine. Lacking, I can still treat other things. So, so yes, PTV is a physics concept that takes into account all uh, accuracy of your mechanical, immobilization, motion management, type of treatment delivery. If it, if it was modulated, modulated, يعني IMRT or or VMAT, I will not treat it on a machine that is not meeting. A one millimeter or less accuracy, but I would treat three DCRT, for example. And how often you're doing IGRT? مهم جدا, especially if I have radiation uh, technologists in بال, the uh, uh, audience. ومهم جدا كمان الأطباء يسمعوني خاصة the managerial level uh, physicians. If I can use IGRT, cone beam CT, then this means I can do the match. I can match the tumor while the patient is on the table to the tumor of during CT sim. In this case, if I can do an IGRT match, تمام? then I can more or less get away with these, more or less, يعني, تمام? ليش? لأنه الآن أنا ما أعتمد, I'm not depending على, على skin laser marks, I'm not depending on the table accuracy up and down. I am looking at tumor precision باستخدام الكون بيم سيتي. The only thing that I should still pay attention to is the accuracy of my LINAC. Lish, and I put it like I put the tumor where it's supposed to be. But if the X1 jaw, the X2 jaw, and the X3 jaw and X4 jaw are not moving as they're supposed to move, and the collimator is not moving as it's supposed to move, then I'm also compromising PTV coverage, right? So you still have to make sure that you're increasing PTV coverage. Marsh, what's up? And I'm not telling you use a 40-year-old machine for 3D CRT. You know, I'm saying you have to be reasonable. You can still go with 3D CRT on certain treatment sites, even if your machine is old. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. No later on, no problem. Okay. Thank you. Sarah, I can have one more question, and then I have to leave. Okay. Uh, me too, unfortunately. But there were there were a couple actually, and then I had comments, but I can leave my comments for later. One question was from Lara earlier, and she was asking if you if you have a protocol that you could share with them to help them start a 3D program. A DCRT program? Yes. I can share IAEA protocols. Uh, they are available for free to the public on the IAEA website. So of course we can share them. They're open access, uh, but they're all in English, yeah, Lara. So yeah, that's why we like to give the lectures in English so that at least you know these concepts when you read about them. Lara asked her question in English, actually. Okay. Bestoon, <laughs> <laughs> and I took the liberty to answer her question. She was asking if the normalization point is the same as the reference point, and I told her not necessarily. But you could have several reference points uh, where you could um, use and be, to, track, to track the doses, right? But you typically have one normal one normalization point, correct? صحيح. So you can have as many reference points as you want, but pay attention. Maysoon, I think the name was. Maysoon. في إشي اسمه primary reference point. على فكرة this depends on what planning system you have. I have used a total of four different planning systems. Well, terminology مختلفة. You know, one planning system would call it prescription point. شكل صغير. Another system calls it primary reference point. تمام. The prescription point or the primary reference point here, the the planning system, it goes to this is where my prescription is at. So this is what in this particular planning system. I'm not trying to promote any planning system. Please don't. But this one particular one is Eclipse. So in Eclipse, the primary reference point is connected to the prescription, right? So this is the point getting the two gray and 10 fragments photo dot 20 gray. Lacking, be careful that you could normalize to, to a different point and then the isodose line you see, the percentage isodose line you see does not reflect what you prescribe. Uh, let me do a summary in English and then I'll do it again in Arabic. And then that will be the, the last uh, 
you can have as many reference points as you want, but only one point will be connected to the prescription. And then you can have normalization point wherever you want to put it. What you need to know that this percentage is connected to this, while this prescription is connected to this. So if you don't know what you're looking at and you're looking at percentage isodose line, you might get the wrong idea of the planning of the coverage. It is preferred, preferred that you have prescription and normalization, the same thing. So that when you look at the plan, this is this, you know, it's reflecting what you want to give to the patient. If it's too confusing, you can always turn on absolute dose. So you look at absolute distribution of dose. استخدمها reference point. لأنه هذا نقطة ال prescription. اللي هي إحنا عايزين اللي هو الطبيب قالنا two gray in ten fractions. هتكون على هاي النقطة. تمام؟ فهي نقطة واحدة prescription. الآن ال normalization مثل ما قلنا التعريف ال normalization هي النقطة اللي مر فيها ال ال hundred percent isodose line. على البرسنتج شايفين مش عارفه اذا الواضح البرسنتج اللي تشوفوه انتم على الشاشه البرسنتج 100 يكون تابع لهذه النقطه اللي هي نورماليزيشن بوينت فاذا هذه النقطه الدوز فيها واحد من البرسكربشن تبعتك تمام بالتالي هو بريفيرد يعني هو هو من المفضل يفضل دائما انه البرسكربشن بوينت خلينا نيجي هون prescription point هي نفسها ال reference point ال normalization point ليش؟ لأنه النسبة المئوية الآن اللي أشوفها في البلان هي تكون نسبة مئوية من ال prescription تبعي ال 100% هو ال 100% 20 جري ال 90% وليس بال percentage ومثل ما قلت لكم يعني هذا planning system جديد علينا وكل هاي المفاهيم شوي جديدة فمن من الأشياء اللي اتفقنا عليها اللي هي prescription هي نفسها normalization ودائما دائما نتطلع على الابسولوت دوز ديستريبيوشن وليس على البرسنتج دوز ديستريبيوشن ليوم الاحد التقي معكم نكمل المحاضره المحاضره ضيل لها ست سلايدات ونخلص وبعدين ندخل في التكنيكس كيف نعمل ال 3 دي بلانينج طيب ممكن بضطر جدا